Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about long run costs. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now first we need to remind ourselves about the difference between the long run and the short run. In the short run, we are going to have at least one input that is fixed. In the short run, we can change the amount of labor or electricity or raw materials that are used in the production, and changing those inputs will affect the rate of production for a firm. We're going to have fixed amounts of physical capital, but by increasing the number of workers in a factory, we can increase the rate of production but the capacity of production will remain fixed in the short run. On the other hand, in the long run, all inputs are going to be variable. Not only can we change the rate of production in the long run, but we can also change the capacity of production in the long run. We're talking about increasing or decreasing the maximum amount of production that a firm can produce. So not only can we change the amount of workers that a firm hires, but we can also change the amount of physical capital that a firm has at its disposal. And increasing the amount of physical capital increases the capacity of production for a firm. Now we have already seen the average total cost curve for a firm, but the fact is this average total cost curve that you've seen is actually a short run average total cost curve. It shows the average cost of production for different units of output for a firm's current capacity. But today we're talking about businesses being able to increase the capacity of production in the long run. If an entrepreneur opens up one taco restaurant, they will have a short run average total cost curve showing their current capacity of production. As they increase output, average total costs are going to fall as the fixed costs are spread over more units and eventually because of diminishing marginal returns, average costs will begin to rise. But as that entrepreneur opens up more restaurants, they will have different capacities of production. More restaurants means more ability to produce tacos. And those different capacities of production give us the long run average total cost curve. Let me show you what that looks like on the graph. Here we have that taco restaurant's short run average total cost curve. As they open up more restaurants, they have new short run average costs. And as that business grows, they will have different capacities of production in the short run. All of these short run average total cost curves can be connected at their minimum points and that gives us a long run average total cost curve. This long run average total cost curve shows us the minimum cost of production of different capacities. The restaurant owner moves from owning one taco restaurant to a taco restaurant empire. Now the long run average total cost curve can have three phases of production. At low capacities of production, average costs tend to fall as capacity increases. We call this downward sloping long run average total cost curve economies of scale. The business is scaling up its production ability and average costs are falling. That happens because as businesses grow, they are able to get bulk prices on resources. They are able to gain better capital equipment and improve technology of production as the business grows. Also, management tends to get more efficient as capacity increases. The next portion of the long run average total cost curve is constant returns to scale. That is a horizontal range of the long run average total cost curve. In this phase, increasing capacity means we will have constant long run costs. Now, when it comes to the horizontal portion of the long run average total cost curve, we can find the minimum efficient scale. The minimum efficient scale is the lowest quantity that a firm can produce while minimizing long run average costs. If a firm must compete with costs of production being minimized, this is the minimum scale of production that the firm must reach. The third and final phase of the long run average total cost curve is the upward sloping portion. Here, as the firm increases capacity, average total costs are going to increase in the long run. We call that portion diseconomies of scale. The increasing average costs are caused by communication breakdowns between managers and employees, as well as bureaucracy inefficiencies. Essentially, the business has grown too large for management to keep the business efficient. Now you aren't necessarily going to see all three of these phases on every long run average total cost curve, but most of the questions you see on the AP microeconomics exam focus on the downward sloping portion of the long run average total cost curve. And that means long run average total costs are decreasing as more output is produced. And we call that economies of scale. Finally, we're going to talk about returns to scale. Returns to scale is essentially the math behind the shape of the long run average total cost curve. Here we're comparing the changes in all inputs versus changes in outputs. First, let's look at increasing returns to scale. 
Here we have a long run production function for a firm. If we assume they currently have one unit of capital and two units of labor being used in production, they will have 12 units of output. If this firm doubles all inputs, now they have two units of capital and four units of labor, they now have 36 units of output. Since we doubled all of the inputs and got more than double of the output, we are increasing our returns for our inputs as the company scales up production. Over on that long run average total cost curve, this is the downward sloping portion. Because we're getting more output for our inputs, average costs are falling. We could also see constant returns to scale. Here we have another long run production function for a firm. At two units of physical capital and two units of labor, they have 26 units of output. If we double all of those inputs to four units of capital and four units of labor, we now have 52 units of output. Doubling all the inputs this time gave us exactly double the output. We have scaled up our production of inputs and gotten the same return on the outputs. Over on the graph, we see that as the constant returns portion of the long run average total cost curve. Average costs are constant in this range. Finally, we could see decreasing returns to scale. Here we have another long run production function. If this firm uses four units of capital and two units of labor, they will produce 38 units of output. If we again double both the inputs and the outputs, moving down to four units of labor and eight units of physical capital, we see 65 units produced. This time doubling all the inputs gave us less than double the output. Scaling up production has decreased our rate of return for those inputs. Over on that long run average total cost curve, we see that as the upward sloping portion. And we call that diseconomies of scale. And there you have it. That's what you need to know about long run costs. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.